Okay, this is the last class in the Mollusca. Um, these are cephalopods, and these ones are very different than the ones with the mollusks that we've looked at where uh, they've either sat still and filter fed or uh, crawled around slowly and grazed or, or crawled slowly towards prey. These ones are more similar to that of a fish, so the Nautilus, Squid, Cuttlefish, and Octopus. Um, active, high metabolic rate, short-lived, uh, tend not to live very long lives, and they have an incredible ability to change their skin. And we'll have a look at that, but I've got videos on chromatophores, which are something that you should probably be aware of, on the Moodle page. So go and have a look at those. Um, general characteristics of cephalopods. All right, so they have a various number of arms. Okay, from 8 to 90. So all the cuttlefish, squid, and octopus all have eight arms and then the two tentacles. The, uh, those are hunting tentacles. And the 90 is the nautilus. They can have up to 90 separate tentacles. And they all bear suckers. Uh, they have the uh, beak. Um, you've probably seen pictures of octopus beaks look a, lo a lot like a parrot and many of them are poison so think of the blue ringed octopus the uh, which is one of the most poison uh, animals in the in the ocean so they have a radula which um, uh, breaks up the the flesh that they eat and they eat they uh, rapidly digest uh, their their food so, which gives them a lot of energy for their high motion lifestyle. Here's what you're going to be responsible for, the subclass Nautiloidea, and then the order Teuthoidea, order Octopoda, and order Sepioidea. You're not responsible for this name, Colloidea, but they all are, these three are in the subclass Colloidea. So, squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. Here is the ancestor, and we see something like a scaphopod shell. All right, and um, this is what uh, all of them have uh, adapted from. And here we can see how the uh, evolution of the different orders has happened from the original ancestor. This rostrum represents the bone or the shell and how it's uh, going. Each of these little images are essentially like um, they're what's been found in the fossil record. And so we can s trace the uh, fossil record of these um, through their development. Uh, in the octopus, the shell was completely lost. In the cuttlefish here, this sepia uh, or cuttle bone is an internal shell. It's a bit wider and bigger than the squid one, which is called a pen. Uh, but these octopus are a little bit more flexible. And these ones um, have a little bit of a stronger shell in order to um, uh, give something for this mantle here, uh, a, a point to a, of attachment for the muscles, because they're more of a swimming um, up in the water column, nectonic kind of organism where the octopus lives almost a kind of a benthic life. And then finally we have uh, this nautiloid, which is a ram's horn, kind of like a squid, and the other nautilus where they've got a spirula, which is a planospiral round shell. Okay, and this is essentially a repeat of what we were just talking about. Okay, let's have a look at the subclass Nautiloidea. Uh, different from the, separate from the other three, which are the, the subclass Colloidea. And these ones tend to be very tropical. Uh, they don't really live in subtropical waters very much. They are deep water usually, and they tend to be in, uh, around reefs, spend their evenings out and nights hunting, day down in deep water hiding uh, below where the light is uh, penetrates uh, very interesting shells okay there we go and they 
have these things called siphuncles, which allow air uh, gas to go from one of these little chambers to the next. But they can um, increase or decrease the amount of of gas in those uh, siphon or in those in those little chambers. Here's a, inside of a uh, Nautilus shell. It's been cut in half, and you can see the siphuncles here. Now, the interesting thing about these things, one interesting thing about these things is, since they vary the amount of um, gas that's in these, and as we know as, from di being divers, there's a, a difference in pressure. As they, um, these things go deeper, there's more pressure on the outside of the shell, and so they can only go to about seven or eight hundred meters uh, that's the absolute deepest before you hit crushing depth of this shell so that's as deep as you're going to get but they um, become neutrally buoyant by regulating the amount of gas in these in these chambers and this part of the shell is where the animal lives it gets bigger obviously as it grows so there you go they just keep laying down a new back uh, if we go to the uh, colloidia, the uh, first order is sepioidia, which are the cuttlefish, and toothoidia, which are the squid. And they both have um, fins around the mantle. So here's the mantle. Okay, this long tube here. <coughs> That's what we call a squid tube. Um, and they both have fins. The fins tend to be up the front in the squid, in the toothoidia, and go the length of the, the body in the um, sepioidia, in the cuttlefish. Both of them have eight arms and then two hunting tentacles, okay, which will they'll creep up to their prey and shoot out very quickly these extra long tentacles and grab their prey. The um, squid interestingly enough, have uh, hooks or um, or even like little teeth on their on their suckers on the tentacles, on the grasping bits of the tentacles, whereas the cuttlefish do not. Uh, they have very well developed eyes and they have um, uh, amazing color uh, changing abilities if we look at the chromatophore video as I've uh, guided you to before. Finally the order octopus, the order octopoda. Alright, these ones have no internal shell. Uh, they can fit through anything really that their beak will fit through. They can just squeeze themselves through tiny little openings and they have eight, obviously octo, eight arms and no hunting tentacles. Very smart. They can learn ra mazes faster than rats um, in similar conditions. All right, so um, for sw fast swimming, they'll use the mantle and siphon, and that's the jet propulsion that we'll have a look at in a second. And for slow swimming, the fins. So those um, are <clears throat> less energy uh, intense, and so they, for if they're going to jet away, they'll use the mantle and siphon and um, the fins otherwise. Okay. With octopus, though, they use the mantle and siphon if they're going to jet away, but generally they crawl along the bottom. Okay. And here's a nice picture of a squid, or sorry, a cuttlefish. You can see that because of the, um, the fin going all the way up the, up the length of the mantle. But here is the um, jet propulsion of the, the funnel. And so what they do is this whole mantle has got muscular rings around it and it contracts and just squeezes water out this thing and away they go, flying in backwards direction. That is really for escape. Uh, they've um, they're a little more complex than some of the other mollusks. They've got these secondarily folded gills, so a little more complex gills for greater oxygen exchange. Uh, 
closed blood vascular system, and they have hemocyanin instead of uh, cyanocyanin, which means that they use iron in their blood pigments, which is more efficient than copper for carrying blood, um, carrying oxygen. Uh, very highly developed eyes, um, complex uh, behavior. You can see these things uh, in terms of their communication with each other, in terms of color. And uh, again, you see the chromatophores in that video that I uh, directed you to, and ink glands. So this is a, a picture of an octopus jetting away from a diver, uh, blowing out ink as a way to confuse predators. So all three, the nautilus, the squid, and the cuttlefish can use ink. Uh, they have, generally they copulate, so the male will sometimes actually even um, jam a sperm sac right through the, um, through the mantle of the female. And then they, they lay their eggs such as this, uh, and they eat, uh, often uh, will, with squid, will die after laying their eggs. Um, and with the female octopus, they'll guard these eggs until they hatch, and then they die after that. And here's a picture of the development of the uh, a little cuttlefish. And you see it leaving its egg as a fully formed adult. Well, a juvenile. And here's a nice picture of a little juvenile squid, and you can see the little chromatophores. Okay. That's it.